Good evening viewers to our bulletin of weekly run-up news. On Monday, as Toiho Yapto, a Nationalist Congress Party NCP MLA was elected unopposed to the post of Deputy Speaker of the Nagaland Legislative Assembly. Yapto, representing the 33 Suruhoto Assembly constituency, was the sole candidate to file nomination for the post and he was unanimously elected unopposed as NLA Deputy Speaker. Chief Minister Nipirio congratulated Yapto, stating that despite being a first-time member of the House, his rich experience in public service would ensure efficient performance of his duties. Yapto thanked the Chief Minister and legislators for their support and promised to perform his duties with sincerity, dignity and impartiality, preserving the House's rich tradition. In a separate development, Dr. Kekre Hyome, advisor for school education and SCRT, tendered an apology for statements he made regarding the recruitment of primary school teachers. Hyome acknowledged that his comments had hurt the sentiments of the Ao and Sumi tribes and led to confusion among the public. He clarified that he had no intention to deprive any deserving aspirant and appealed for goodwill and understanding. In response to Hume's apology, the All Students Conference and the All Sumi Students Union withdrew their proposed indefinite shutdown scheduled from Tuesday. AKM and SKK appreciated Hume's gesture and urged all stakeholders to foster an atmosphere of mutual respect and understanding for the well-being and progress of society. Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh launched the National E-Vidhan application in the State Assembly on Tuesday. The project aims to make the Assembly more transparent, accessible, accountable and effective in promoting democracy. NEVA is part of India's goal to become a digitally empowered society and knowledge economy. It aims to facilitate a paperless assembly which will be beneficial to the economy and environment. NEVA is one of the 44 mission mod projects identified by the Indian government. The fifth session of the 12th assembly of Manipur began on 28 February 2024. The Nagahoho on Wednesday announced the names of the newly elected team of office bearers for the tender 2024-29 to during the general session held on Thursday at Shah Complex Hall, Tahazam Senapati, Manipur. The new team will be headed by Sulangtang Lota as President, Lota Tribe, and Atoho Kikiho Sumi Tribe as General Secretary, while Paoho Nyume Zeme Tribe and Sea Hills Assam has been made the Speaker. Sulantang has reaffirmed the Nagahoho's commitment to standing firm against all adversities while protecting the legitimate rights of the Naga people and striving for unification across all Naga areas. The Naga Students' Federation on Thursday has demanded the revocation of the suspension order for the inner line permit in the former Dimapur district and the strict implementation of ILP within 30 days. In a letter to the Chief Secretary, NSF expressed concern over the lack of ILP enforcement, allowing an alarming influx of illegal immigrants, posing a significant threat to the indigenous population. NSF went on to state that the ILP was a safeguard for the interests of the indigenous inhabitants and called for a resolute government to enforce it. They also pointed out that the exclusion of the former Dimapur district from the ILP regime had created a haven for illegal immigrants, risking the transformation of indigenous Nagas into refugees in their own homeland. They conducted an ILP verification drive and detected 637 defaulters, highlighting the government's failure to create awareness about ILP requirements. NSF has demanded immediate and decisive action from the government to revoke the suspension and called for awareness campaigns to educate all communities about the mandatory ILP requirement. The fourth session of the 14th Nagaland Legislative Assembly concluded on Friday with Speaker Sharingan Longkumar adjourning the session Sindai. This marked the end of a four-day budget session that commenced on Monday. In his closing remarks, Speaker Longkumar offered a non-partisan perspective on the budget 2024-25 
and the conduct of the assembly members. He appreciated the budget and thanked the chief minister and the minister in charge of finance for crafting a comprehensive, progressive and people-centric budget aimed at the socio-economic upliftment of Naglan. Despite emphasis on economic development, he urged members to consider the social implications of their actions and commit to progressive social changes, stressing the collective responsibility of the Assembly members. Longcomer has urged all members to renew the commitment to breaking free from internal and external constraints, advocating for a more liberated and empowered Naglen. In another focus, further, on the last day of the fourth session of 14th Assembly NLA, the House passed resolutions on regularization of employees in Group A, B, C, and D post appointed prior to June 6, 2016, moved by Chief Minister Nipurio, where a policy will be adopted to carry out a one-time exercise for regularization of Group A, B, C, and D employees appointed on contractual or ad hoc basis against sanctioned post prior to June 6, 2016 and completed 10 years of service by conducting a suitability test by which they may be regularized against the post they are occupying provided they fulfilled all the criteria as laid down in the policy. The Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party Parliamentary Board unanimously on Saturday resolved to award the party ticket to former minister and current advisor to the Chief Minister Dr. Chumban Mori for the upcoming elections to the sole parliamentary seat of Naglan. The decision was made at a meeting held at the NDPP headquarters in Kohima on March 2, 2024. The NDPP, through its Media and Communication Committee, has informed all sections of the people and political parties to continue to support the People's Democratic Alliance PDA government and its consensus candidate in the elections. Meanwhile, Konyak Students Union on Saturday has issued directive to all concerned that the union would strongly oppose entry or influx of non-locals to Mon district without valid documents or permit from concerned authority. KSU has sought the cooperation of all by informing if any new member is found or seen in their locality be reported immediately to the union members. Lorenbam Rameshwar Mete, MLA of Cairo Assembly constituency in Manipur, has proposed a shoot at sight policy against illegal immigrants from Myanmar. He posited that a shoot at sight policy could significantly address the illegal immigration issue. He alleges that these immigrants exploit loopholes in the system to obtain voter cards and establish themselves in Manipur by marrying locals. He stressed on the need for effective implementation of the National Register of Citizens and stricter surveillance measures to curb the issue. He also urged the government and indigenous communities to play an active role in preventing illegal immigration and land encroachment. The MLA further highlighted the potential national security threat posed by the influx of undocumented immigrants and called for the implementation of a stringent law to address the issue. He claimed that people from Mizoram using Aadhaar cards have migrated to Manipur and registered on the voter list. He alleged that these immigrants in turn brought in more illegal immigrants from Burma. Before we end the roundup, a quick reminder to our viewers on the status of FMR. The Mizoram Assembly has opposed the center's decision to fence the Indo-Myanmar border and scrap the free movement regime. Mizoram Chief Minister Laldu Homa and Home Minister K. Sabdanga argued that fencing would approve the boundary imposed by the British and be unacceptable to the Zo ethnic people dreaming of a reunification. They said national security should justify fencing and urge the center to reconsider the hardships faced by the Zo ethnic people. The Nagaland Legislative Assembly also plans to adopt a resolution against the FMR's suspension. Nagaland Chief Minister Nipurio noted the concerns expressed by members, especially from Eastern Nagaland, and said the state government would pursue the matter with the government of India to ensure the FMR's continuation. That is all until the next weekend. This was NEA powered by Nagaland Post.